Welcome to our tutorial about creating a profile. Let's start with a new document. OK. The document opens and Sketch 1 is active. Let's right click and unselect Snap to Grid. Now let's activate the Circle tool. And we'll drop our circle about here. Finish the sketch. And let's go to the Model tab now. Activate the Extrude command. Since we've got a single closed profile in our sketch, it's pre-selected in the Extrude dialog window. Let's click OK. And now let's edit our sketch a little bit. Let's activate the Line tool. Create a couple lines, something like this. Right click and done. Let's do two more lines. Right click and done. Finish the sketch and back to the Model tab. Right click on Extrusion 1, Edit Feature. There's a red cross displayed in the dialog window now. Let's click on it to examine profile problems. Inventor gives me a diagnosis. Open loop found in this profile. The problem profile is selected in our workspace. Let's click Next. Same problem with the second profile, an open loop. Let's cancel out of the Sketch Doctor. And cancel out of the Extrude tool. Double click on Sketch 1. Let's go fix our problems. We'll activate the Trim tool. Let's trim these corners. And then finish the sketch. Back to Extrusion 1. Right click, Edit Feature. The Sketch Doctor's red cross icon is no longer displayed. That means that we fixed our problem. Let's click on Profile. We're able to select the second profile now. Basically now we've got two closed loops and we can use these to create solids. Let's double click on the sketch now. We'll make some more changes. When we used the Trim tool, Inventor added a coincident relation to all four corners. Let's right-click and Show Constraints. We see the coincident constraint when I mouse over the corner. Let's go ahead and select and delete the constraint. Now if I exit the sketch, we're going to get an error message because our profile is now open. Let's close this profile. We'll grab and drag the point over this point and drop it when the point becomes green. The coincident relation is back in place. Let's update the Show All Constraints to make sure. Right click, Show All Constraints, or F8. Here is the coincident relation displayed. Let's select and delete this circle and exit the sketch. We get a warning message. Errors occurred during the update. The profile loop couldn't be repaired. The extrusion couldn't be built. Our solution? We'll need to edit Extrusion 1 and reselect the profile. Let's accept that suggestion. We'll double click on Extrusion 1. Select the profile. It's the only one here. Now let's go to the More tab. Let's apply a minus 5 degree taper. The arrow here indicates the direction of the taper. Let's click OK. Now I'm going to create another sketch. Let's right click on a profile, New Sketch. Select View Face. And I'll select this face. Our projection geometry is already created here. Let's create some more projection geometry. We'll select these four outer lines. Right click and done. Here we've got two closed profiles. The geometry is fully constrained. Let's right click and show all constraints. Looks good. Let's finish the sketch. Activate the Extrude tool. Here we can select one or two profiles. Cancel out of the tool and double click on Sketch 2.
Let's add a couple more lines. Something like this. Right click and done. And another line, right click and done. Now let's activate the trim tool and we'll trim these ends off. Right click and done. Right click, show all constraints. As you see, the trim tool automatically added coincident constraints. Let's finish this sketch. Activate the extrude command. We've got five closed profiles here. What if I want to select the profile that's between these four lines? Cancel out of the tool and double click on Sketch 2. Now let's drop a point right about here. Right click and done. Good. So let's apply a coincident constraint. We'll select this line and this point, this line and the point. Right click and done. Show all constraints. And here is our coincident constraint. In the status bar, we're prompted for four dimensions. Let's activate the dimension tool. Right click and done. Or I can use a fixed constraint. I can fix these four lines. Now we've got a fully defined sketch, blue in color. Let's right click, select done. Let me show you how the fixed constraint works in a moment. For now though, let's go back to the model tab, exit the sketch, activate the extrude tool. Now I'm able to select the profile in this corner. Let's cancel out of the tool and go back to our sketch. If I try to trim the projected line, I can't do it. In order to do so, let's right click and done. I need to delete the projected geometry constraint. Activate the trim tool. Now when I try to trim this line, I get an error message. Adding this constraint will over constrain the sketch. Let's cancel out of the warning message. Right click and done. The reason for this is because I have this line dimensioned. If I delete the dimension, I'm able to trim the line. Right click and done. We need to add two more dimensions. Let's click on the fixed constraint. We'll select this point. Now the sketch is fully constrained. Let me show you now how the fixed constraint works. Let's draw a line. Right click, done. This line has got three degrees of freedom. I can drag it in the Y and X directions. And I'm also able to grab and rotate if I select and drag at the end. Let's select fixed. And then select the line. Right click and done. This action has fixed the angle and line direction. The endpoints can still be moved. Let's add some dimensions now. One dimension is needed per the status bar's message. The status bar still tells us that one dimension is needed. Right click and done. I can still move the line. Let's add one more fixed constraint. And the line is fully constrained. Right click, done. Right click, show all constraints. OK, let's delete the constraints. Now let's add a fixed constraint to the midpoint of this line. Right click and done. Now the line can be rotated along the midpoint. And that's all I wanted to show you about how the fixed constraint works. This concludes our tutorial about creating profiles.